Hello there YouTube, this is Necrostevo and it's time for our team builder for Season 7, Week 10 of the GBA. This week the Utah Jasmine will be going up against the Alola Athletic, who are coached by Hoodlums Crafty and his information will be in the description. Uh, if you do not want to watch an entire team builder, there is a little link in the description to skip right to the battle. These are never long though, so let's get right into it. Um, I've had a lot of fun watching Hoodlum Scrafty's uh, uploads and another new opponent to fight, so definitely excited for that. That being said, we really need to win this battle just if, if only to get some more momentum on our side. Um, and I would just feel really good if we won the battle, of course, so that's always nice. Uh, trying to be a little bit inventive again because that seemed to work so well against Crimson Seabed. Um, but this time we're going to focus on our execution with the tools. Now you see his team on the side there in case you need a reminder. I did put little stars beside the Pokemon that I'm pretty sure he's going to be bringing. Uh, of course he does have access to sand and that's pretty good against my team. Um, he doesn't even need to run a lot of speed on Excadrill under sand to outspeed things so that allows him to get more bulk. So how do we handle that? Well first off we have our Focus Punch Breloom outside of the um, Crobat and the Aromatisse, his team takes massive damage from Breloom. Um, I don't know why this says Bullet Seed. This should be Seed Bomb. Um, yeah, we're going to fix that. Bing, because we're not going to go with Technician. We're going to go with Poison Heal. So yeah, Seed Bomb, Focus Punch, Rock Tomb. Rock Tomb is just there so I can hit the Crobat. Uh, but with that speed, I am able to outspeed something like max speed Tyranitar. I don't see that coming, but just in case. And that lets me hit a nice round number to get maximum recovery from Poison Heal as well. So that will be fantastic. Um, I can set up substitutes on a number of his Pokemon. Um, like if I have my Breloomin on the Aromatisse, or like he switches in the Aromatisse as I set up a substitute expecting the fighting type move. I can get off some pretty decent damage on it between Seed Bomb, um, or if he like switches it in on a raw Focus Punch, I really like that too. Um, of course, Breloom does put a lot of pressure on Excadrill and Tyranitar, and so I expect to be able to bring in Breloom on them, barring like a Fire or Ice type coverage move from Tyranitar, who Tyranitar is a Z user, but I should be able to scare them out most of the time. Um, if Rotom Wash wants to try to come in there too. I don't expect that, but he has to worry about Seed Bomb there as well. And if I'm already poisoned, he can burn me with will o -Wiss, so I really like that. Uh, up next, we have the Hippowdon, which I'm bringing up fully offensive Hippowdon this week. Um, he doesn't have any swap-ins to Quake Edge, so um, yeah, why not bring that? Going Sand Force, just in case he does bring Tyranitar then I can really hurt his Pokemon, and this will punish him if he does happen to bring Espeon to try to switch it in to bounce my Stealth Rocks back. I can one-hit KO Espeon um, a good portion of the time if it's not bulky. Uh, if he still has things like Rotom or Crobat alive, I think I should definitely double switch depending on the, the circumstance, um, and I'm not going to even try to click Stealth Rock while Espeon is alive either, so... That is nice though, because I can bring it in on things like Excadrill and just click Earthquake, things like Tyranitar. I am expecting him to have like an ICMZ because that hits my Apaldon so hard. Um, but if he has that, then I can um, hopefully scout that out and go right out into my Lantern. Uh, if he brings Dredagon, I have just enough speed out, speed, zero speed Dredagon. So that is pretty excellent. Uh, on Reuniclus here, this is one of my win conditions this week. I am finally bringing Reuniclus, the ultimate squishy and squishiness. Uh, Reuniclus here, I went back and forth between a Calm Mind or a Trick Room set, but I really decided to go with Trick Room because of the immediate power. I'm afraid of Calm Mind giving him too many opportunities to either switch around between things or at the very least hit me with coverage moves. If I go with Trick Room, then the best thing he can do is hit me with like a uh, Sucker Punch from Dragon. Um So yeah, I do have to be careful about the Snorlax, the Espeon, and the um, Frostlass. Aromatisse can even carry its own Calm Mind sets. So I, uh, granted I'm running Psy Shock for that reason. So I, I really want to be able to hit them hard and immediately. Uh, and of course, if I run Trick Room, that allows me to run Shadow Ball instead of focusing 
on just Psyshock and Focus Blast. Uh, focusing on Focus Blast. Yes, I like it. Uh, up next we have our Lantern, whom of course is Assault Vest yet again. Uh, but this time, just like last week, we're going with Max Special Defense because there really wasn't a reason to try to run any offense. This is just going to be my general pivot into the Rotom Wash. It can even live a hit from Shaman if need be. It also pivots nicely into Aromatisse and Frostlass. Uh, Espeon somewhat. Espeon might be running Psy Shock though, so that's not necessarily a great switch in. I don't see Excadrill coming in on Lantern because I can go for Scald, so that's why we have Volt Switch here. Whereas on my Zapdos, we have U-Turn. Um, I do not have a naive Zapdos, which is why this one is timid. It has just enough speed for, um, um, that one's for max speed Tyranitar. No, that's for Jolly Drill, excuse me. For Jolly Excadrill is why I have that speed there. Um, uh, and then Thunderbolt Heat Wave Roost, just to keep up pressure. Um, I can get off U-turns against this whole team, of course, so Zapdos is going to be a great catch-all lead. And then if he leads with his anything bar, I guess, like if he leads with Snorlax, then I can't hit that. So I'd have to U-turn out of there. But for against most of his team, I can just drop Thunderbolt, which is really nice. And then finally, Manaphy, once again, um, we're going to try the Water EMZ with the Tail Glow Ice Beam set. We saw how well that worked out against Battler X, but against this team, it distinguishes itself by being able to set up either tail glow or the rain z rain dance against something like uh dreadagon aromatis even to a lesser extent the frost last the snorlax and the espion none of them can really one hit ko me and i am able to scare several of his pokemon out with my mana fee as well i did run max speed here just to tie with shaman i don't expect him to bring shaman because of my coverage that I can generally run on my Pokemon, but he also might not want to deal with Lantern because Lantern brocks his Rotom Wash, so I could see Shaman coming in that respect. Uh, but yeah, that's the that's the general idea or the conceit with this battle. I'm really not sure whom he's going to bring, unfortunately, outside of those that I earmarked there. Once again, he could really bring any combination here. Something like Embor hits my team incredibly hard, and even a Scarf Embor would be annoying to deal with. Uh, and then the Tyranitar Excadrill combination is very possible. He can get rid of entry hazards or keep them off the field between Crobat and Espeon, um, or Excadrill once again. Uh, Aromatisse makes a very, very interesting defensive core with something like uh, the Excadrill or the, the Frostless even for the fighting type moves alongside Excadrill. So. We just have to be kind of prepared for all those things. If he brings Frostlass, I'm assuming he'll lead with it. I'm still going to lead with Zapdos in that situation because he won't know if I'm Scarfed or not. But um, I'll have to kind of play around that a little bit. But uh, yeah, so generally that's going to be the game plan. Thanks for watching the team builder. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the battle. Talk to you in a little bit. Okay, so thank you so much for taking a moment to watch the team builder. If you didn't, quick rundown here. We have a nice expert belt Zapdos, the Water AMZ Manaphy, a nice uh, especially defensive Lantern, a fully offensive Hippowdon, Sub Punch Breloom, and a Trick Room Reuniclus. And it, looking at Callum's team, you can see that he not did not bring anything that I expected him to bring. Uh, his team really caught me off guard because he didn't, I guess he didn't have to bring the sand, but it just seemed like such a good matchup against my team given the speed tiers. Um, but yeah, really the only Pokemon that he brought that I was expecting him to bring was the Rotom. I thought he had a lot other better options than what he brought. Uh, so I kind of had my work cut out for me from the beginning of this match. Now, uh, that much being said, still gonna start off with Zapdos just because that's the best overall lead. But if he didn't lead with Frostlass, of course Crobat or Rotom would be fantastic leads as well. Uh, so we really needed to see what he was going to start off with. So we are going to start off with my Zapdos here. And he decides to start off with Crobat, so that's awesome. We do get that initial um, priority there. Not bringing Volt Switch to this battle sucked because that would have done considerably more damage. Um, 
I didn't know if he was expecting me to be scarfed or something weird like that, so I just went straight for a U-turn. If he went for his own U-turn, then he would have seen that he outsped me right there. We got out into my Scrafty, and I was like, awesome. Okay, should I go for the Rock Tomb here? Because he might switch right back into the, the Crobat. Nah, I don't think he'll do that right away, but he does. And of course, Crobat can have Infiltration as an ability, so we cannot stay in here because he would immediately KO my Breloom through the Substitute. Um, so we go back out into my Zapdos, expecting him to U-turn. If he does Brave Burr, which he chooses to do, that won't do very much to Zapdos because if he's a fat bat, he is not offensive, and that's definitely not offensive, like banded damage or anything like that. And here we see him swap up moves too, so even better. Unfortunately, now he knows that I'm not Scarfed, so I was able to bluff that early on, but that information is out of the bag. Um, I just went straight for a Thunderbolt, hoping that he would overpredict or go out into something weird. And, you know, last time I went for U-turn, so if you wanted to try to play that scenario, I would have the, the the upper hand. We end up both switching out at the same time. He goes from Snorlax out to Rotom, and I went out into Poudon expecting him to just keep on attacking. But that doesn't work out too well. He gets the better end of that kind of double there. And then I do decide to go into my Lantern there in case he just goes straight for the Electric-type move. I didn't mind Lantern getting Burn because I definitely prefer a Burn over a Toxic. Um, and there's a few, I could see Toxic, for example, on like the the Shaman or like a sub Shaman or the Rotom even running Toxic. Didn't really want to deal with any of that. And since I do have my Breloom already poisoned, I don't have to worry about his will o -Wisp, so we get to bring it in here. No sense in not predicting the Crobat to come in this time, so I do go for Rock Tomb. And I'm able to break his Charty Berry and force him to activate it. Um, and with the speed drop, I have a chance about speeding him it kind of depends on if he's fully invested or not but we're not going to play that game really uh, we're just going to go straight out into my zapdos expecting u-turn and zapdos is getting worn down um, a lot so i really do need to get that hp back um, here i'm going to hard switch out expecting him to go for the ice move i went straight into lantern because lantern is my dedicated check to frostlass he predicts that nicely and goes for spikes. I could have very easily gone straight for a heat wave there with expert belt. I would have brought him down to a sash or KO'd him if I had hit. Um, he does take the opportunity to swap out into his shaman as I just go for scald. If shaman came in, I went for scald hoping to snag a burn, which I do. And if he uh, switched out into something else like the Snorlax or the Crobat, I, those guys would have to risk a burn as well. Uh, I didn't want to try going for the electric move or anything like that at that point because if he stayed in with the shaman then that wouldn't look uh too great either um, he does go for seed flare here and my lord that does more damage than i expected it to i know i'm not a bulky zapdos but he doesn't even have a life orb or anything Jeez. um here i go out into breloom expecting him to go for earth power is what my thinking there was Breloom just gets demolished by a psychic. I thought for sure he would predict me to do something weird and go for a coverage move, but I guess at the time I completely blanked on coverage moves because I was like, okay, surely he's not going to go for another seed flare. So he might go for a random coverage move. And he does, but it's exactly what was needed for Breloom. Um, and I was hoping that he wouldn't get the special defense drop against my Reuniclus because with the Trick Room up, I can actually hurt his team a good bit. Unfortunately, Shaman is able to barely live this Psy Shock, and after the special defense drop, Reuniclus can't take another one. Uh, so that was kind of unfortunate. I needed a little. I needed a few more turns of burn, basically. There, um, the Trick Room is up though, so that's nice. I can go out into Pout on, and I do have to risk Stone Edge here because he has two things that could switch in easily on Earthquake and waste my turns of Trick Room. Um, and yeah, I do know, fortunately, that I can take any one hit from the. Rotom, and I can also take any hit from Crobat too, even though I'm an offensive hippo. I unfortunately miss a Stone Edge there as he hits the Hydro Pump. I really just wanted damage on Rotom, because Rotom is the only thing that's stopping Manaphy from sweeping. So I just needed damage. That's that's it. And I would have had two Stone Edge hits on it, with at least the chance of a crit if I hit that first one. But uh, we do get a little bit of justice here as he misses his Hydro Pump. But we do find out that all those misses basically amount to a game of space volleyball there, since it doesn't really matter in the end when my trick room goes down. Uh, I do switch into Lantern here as he just, 
I'm hoping that he continues to go for his hydro pumps. Uh, yeah, because that's just going to burn a few more of those. So that's good. He's down to at least five hydro pumps, assuming he PP max them. Because um, then I can bring things in on his missing hydro pumps. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I do expect him to bring in Snorlax here. And I sh really should have gone for Scald for the chance of the burn. Uh, and I had Volt Switch and I could have clicked that too. And I decided to go for Scald again, hoping for the burn. I was worried he might have Earthquake. But I was more worried about switching Zapdos into a return or a body slam and having it get KO'd. And really it would have made more sense there to just go ahead and assume he has Earthquake. Let's just Volt Switch out of the situation. But I don't and I stupidly land my Lantern and go down right there. Um, I do go ahead and get up my Stealth Rocks here. Those are pretty important because if the Frost Lass is sashed um, or if the... Uh, I don't. I think the Frostless is the only thing that will be carrying a Sash, but I wanted to make sure I broke that because in the end game, with Mana Feast set up, I need to be able to one hit KO things, and so rocks are very important for that damage. Now here, since he's recovering up with his uh, Snorlax, we're going to recover up with HP of our own. He goes for Ice Punch, and even though I'm an offensive hit Powdon, that doesn't actually do that much. I was pretty impressed um, with the squad that he brought. Offensive hit Powdon was kind of useless. Which I was very disheartened by, because like, uh, I if I just brought a defensive one, for example, I could have walled out the Snorlax, for one thing. Uh, but, on the other side of things though, if he's going to stay in here and take all this extra damage on a Snorlax, once again makes things easier for my mana fee. Um, I do decide to go for Stone Edge there, in case he swaps into Rotom. And we see that if I had gotten off that extra Stone Edge earlier, he might have been in range for, you know, another one. But that's that doesn't really matter because he's able to hit this Hydra Pump. Uh, and so my Hippowdon goes down. I think that's the only time I've seen a Hippowdon put so much damage on a Rotom. Uh, especially for him being a, a little bit more of a bulky one. That's okay, though. I'm going to go out into Manaphy now and bluff the Energy Ball, hoping that he swaps out because I kind of have to set up the Z Rain Dance right here. Um, because I will outspeed his whole team from what I've seen, uh, barring the Embor, with the Z Rain Dance. And now that I have plus one speed, uh, Embor can have Sucker Punch is what I meant by the speed there. Um, but uh, I was hoping that he would swap out and expect me to go straight for the Energy Ball, but he just stays in in Thunderbolts. And that was a complete bluff anyway, because I don't have anything to hit the Rotom with. Apparently bringing Surf and Ice Beam just isn't uh, a good combination because that has yet to work out for me ever. And I don't know if that's just my inexperience with Manaphy or if I'm just not um, in the court of the Sea Prince. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, but yeah, we're down to just Zapdos here. And while I will be able to KO Rotom, that's, that's just a little bit too little too late. Uh, so we are able to take down Rotom, which at least lowers the differential. But then Frostlice comes back in, and it definitely outspeeds my Zapdos, which is unfortunate. Um, so he's able to take out ice, uh, my Zapdos with an Ice Beam, and that's going to be good game for Callum. And we lose 0-4, which I think is my biggest differential loss thus far this season for the Utah Jasmine. Um, you know, that I think that I lost that battle just based on the, uh, the Pokemon that I brought to the matchup. I didn't bring the right Pokemon for what he brought, or he just predicted what I was going to bring and brought completely different things very, very effectively. Uh, Cause the Pokemon that I had were not good for that matchup. So uh, we need to do, we have two more weeks of battles left in the GBA. And what needs to happen for those two battles, especially because both of the remaining battles are rematches for the Utah Jasmine, are just kind of going back to uh, that drawing board of, okay, what has worked versus innovation, we need to get both of those together and have them proceed down the aisle in a very orderly fashion. Because going too far to this end of let's do something inventive, that didn't work out very well for me. So I really want to end with a positive win-loss differential. And to get that against skilled players like Gem Leader Geo again or uh, against Tom who has already beaten the um, Utah Jasmine once this season, going to have to kind of buckle it in. So guys, thanks so much for watching this battle. I do hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about changing that approach there for the last two weeks of battles. And in the meantime, I hope you guys have a great week.
talk to you later. Bye.